Hey guys, Jeff here. I want to show you something really, really epic at the end of this video, but first I want to talk about this. This is my Bible. I've had this particular one for a couple years, and I want to ask, how do you see this? What's the lens in which you see the Bible through? I would say that the answer to that question affects everything. The answer to that question affects how you see God, how you see yourself, how you see the world, and if there's problems arising in your life, or you're struggling, or there's things going on, I would argue a lot of times that arises, at least in my own life, from seeing a distorted or a false narrative that God does not reveal. So I want to talk to you about kind of a few different wrong ways that a lot of us see the Bible, and then one that I think that'll kind of make the Bible explode and blow up in a good, beautiful, amazing narrative way. Now first, let me just make clear, when I say distorted narrative, what distorted means is that it has an element of truth, but ultimately when you stretch that out to the whole thing, it makes it look ugly and weird. In the same way when you go to clown mirrors, it's distorted. It shows you, but it's weird and it's off and it doesn't make sense. Now the three columns I want to go through is kind of how do you see the Bible, how do you see God? And then how do you see yourself? I think those three go hand in hand and kind of fall like dominoes all together. Now, the first false narrative that we see the Bible primarily as is as a sword or a weapon. Now, the Bible actually says once that the Bible is a sword and it cuts and it divides and that's beautifully true. But when you elevate that to the ultimate, like we already said, that's when it becomes problematic because when you elevate the Bible to sword, that makes God actually a military general or someone who's all about invoking violence on others. And then when you think about that, when you see God like that, then you actually see yourself as a soldier in his army. And that's when it becomes really problematic. You can spot these people who see the Bible and God in themselves like this because they're usually on a street corner yelling at people. They're usually the people picketing and protesting and hating on everyone. The second way to see the Bible is a rule book. Now, does the Bible have rules in it? Yes and amen, but when you make it ultimately a rule book that you go to to look up legal code as if God's a lawyer, right? Then that turns God into a cop or a police officer. God is nothing more than someone who's looking for people who's breaking the rules. Then what does that make you? That makes you someone who wants to escape punishment. It makes you a prisoner. It makes you not like God because you think you have to run away from him. Now, sadly, that sounds a lot more like Zeus, does it not? Who just wants to throw lightning bolts down on you. Another popular one in American evangelicalism was in the Bible is a, a roadmap to life. I heard that a ton growing up. Now, again, that has an element of truth, but I think it's problematic for a few reasons. Now, one, if the Bible is ultimately a roadmap to life, meaning where do I go to college? Who do I date? You'll get seriously frustrated when you go to the Bible like that. That makes God kind of like an eternal Santa Claus, right? God is nothing more than this old guy with a white beard who has a naughty and nice list and his whole job is to give you exactly what you ask for. And then so if the Bible's a roadmap to life, God's Santa, then ultimately you're the center of the universe. God exists simply to give you exactly what you want. Now the last and the correct way to see the Bible, I think, is to see it as narrative. You see the Bible as a story, then that makes God the author of life. That makes God the author author and the creator of everything. That makes God the grand storyteller, which is beautiful. And then if that's God, then that makes us a part in his grand narrative and play, but not the main part, Jesus is. So think about how that balance works where you are important, you are unique, you are beautiful, and you have a job to do, but we're not the center of the universe. Our job is to look and put the spotlight on the main character who is Jesus, who died and resurrected and brought this new world in the resurrection. I actually have some friends right now who are doing this amazing project and that they're trying to show the narrative of the scriptures by doing a beautiful animated video for every single book of the Bible, which is just crazy. And then they're doing topical videos on top of that about different theological concepts and terms that we need to learn from. And I honestly think those videos will change the game, but they've given us a sneak peek. And so I wanted to show you one real quick to kind of see just how beautiful it is when the story and the narrative is revealed as that. So here it is. The first part of Genesis begins with a creation story where God creates everything. And how exactly that happens, of course, that's where all the debates come. But he takes a dark, watery chaos and he turns it into a beautiful garden where humans can, can flourish. That sounds nice. It does sound nice. In fact, seven different times God says of all that he's made that it's good. And this is where we meet the first human characters in the Bible, Adam and Eve. They're, they're both individual characters, but they're also representative. Adam is the Hebrew word for humanity, and Eve is the Hebrew word for life. And God creates them in his image. In other words, humanity reflects or is meant to reflect the, the, the creativity, the goodness and character of the creator, 
out into the world that he's made. And they're supposed to reproduce and make cultures and neighborhoods and art and gardens and, and everything else. But he gives them a, a moral choice about how they're going to go about building this world. And this is what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is all about. Now that was just a snippet. You can watch the rest by clicking up here in the video. And man, how beautiful and amazing is that? Do you see what I'm saying? When everything kind of operates and clicks together when it's narrative, when it's story. So do you believe that God is telling a grand story, that Jesus is the main character, that you are in it, we have work to do, and we are worshiping the creator and author of life?